Hi, and welcome to People, Planet, and Profit, a conversation dedicated to my premise that all companies, all grocers, all retailers can be triple bottom line and can focus on creating purposeful jobs for everyone, focus on being environmentally smart and environmentally sensitive and taking care of the planet, and yes, on making a profit, on creating innovation flywheels that create profitable outcomes for everybody involved. So I'm really excited. I love nothing more than having an opportunity to speak with thought leaders uh, who are making good things happen today. And today, believe it or not, we're going to focus on the topic of frozen food. Now, why frozen food? Well, here's why. Frozen, as I like to say, frozen's really hot. Frozen's having a moment. Frozen food has all the culinary innovation you could want from around the world, all the global flavors. But critically and importantly, it is nature's way of preser preserving food without any chemicals, without any salt, which makes it very nutritious, more nutritionally dense food and democratizes access to those foods for everybody. And there's no waste. There's no waste in the supply chain. There's no waste from farm to plate and it lasts for a long time. Therefore, it's convenient. So frozen food is a major growing category within grocers and retailers around the world. So I'm thrilled today to introduce you to Allison Boder. Allie is the CEO of AFI, the American Frozen Food Institute. She's gonna to talk to us about AFI's mission. And also here today with us is Randy Burt. Randy is a managing director of Alex Partners, the global consultancy, and he focuses on CPG and manufacturers across their practice. So I'm thrilled to have them here today to talk about frozen food, the future, the now of frozen, the future of frozen. So today I'm thrilled to introduce Allison Boder. Allison is the CEO of AFI, the American Frozen Food Institute. Um, and I can't think of a better person and a better topic that demonstrates people, planet, and profit than the power of frozen food. So I'm thrilled to have Allison here today. Alongside Allison, I'm going to introduce Randy Burt. Randy is a managing partner with Alex Partners, the global consultancy. And as far as I'm concerned, he runs all the cool stuff at Alex Partners. And actually, the last time I got to be with both of you, I think we are all standing around uh, a pen with some armadillos inside. We are watching <laughs> armadillo races here at the AFI had their frozen conference in Austin, Texas, which by the way, I'm broadcasting live from Austin. Um, so we all got to experience the armadillo races. And as a lifelong Texan, it was my first time. So it was either that or the tequila talking, but I thought it was pretty cool. So anyway, I'm thrilled. Um, Allie and Randy, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and let's get started. Maybe before we dive in, I know we've got some really interesting content we want to share with folks today. Maybe Allie, uh, you know, talk a little bit more about yourself and talk to us a bit about the mission of AFI, American Frozen Food Institute. Super. Thanks, Susie. And thanks so much for having me uh, on today and, and with Randy. I think this is going to be fun to talk about people, planet, and profit, three things we all care about. Um, AFI is the American Frozen Food Institute, and we are a trade association that represents frozen food manufacturers. Our manufacturers are located all over the world, but they um, sell product into the U.S. marketplace. And they represent companies that grow, harvest, and freeze fruits and vegetables, and companies that make value-added prepared meals as well. So we really uh, represent almost any product that you might see down the frozen food aisle, which is a lot of fun. So that's the other word to add to the people, profit, planet, and fun. Like uh, it. it is a growing industry. The frozen food category now is worth nearly $80 billion at retail. So we've saw, we were really a, uh, penned a, a powerhouse during the pandemic when consumers were looking to increase the storage ability of foods um, and decrease some of their shopping trips. They turned to frozen to do that and also to add variety and continued um, choice and nutrition during that time. Uh, today, more than eight in 10 Americans eat at least one frozen food item a week and 40% uh, are eating frozen food daily or every couple of days. So it really shows how the frozen food category has been growing and impacting more lives. And there's a reason for that. And I think I like your terminology of people, planet, and profit. 
because it plays well into the uh, value proposition of frozen foods in general. Um, consumers are choosing frozen foods because of their attributes like affordability and convenience or ease of preparation. Also the nutrition and quality and consumers like having frozen foods as a meal backup uh, plan. And more recently, consumers are appreciating frozen foods for its ability to reduce food waste in the home. And in today's economy, none of us can afford to waste food. Um, and even more so uh, today, and, and certainly with some of our lower income consumers, which we're going to talk about later uh, in, in our afternoon. So maybe I'll stop there with that overview, but I'm really excited about this category and excited about some of the insights that we've gleaned in working with uh, Randy and Alex partners. So Randy, Hello. turn it over to you to introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Allie. Uh, I'm Randy Bird, as, as Susie said, a managing director with Alex Partners. I work across food and beverage with both food retailers as well as CPG manufacturers. Uh, and we work uh, on a number of different topics from commercial excellence to operational excellence to Oregon operating model. Frozen is a category that a decade ago, I would say, was, was stagnant and not growing and sort of left for dead. There's been a ton of innovation since then, and the category has really recovered and now is a much more critical department in the store. And I think even more exciting, as we'll talk about today, is as we look out into the future, there's a lot of opportunity to not only drive your business successfully, but also meet some of the needs of the communities that you serve and meet some of the needs that we have from an environmental standpoint as a U.S. citizen and also as a global citizen. And I think today we'll really dive into those opportunities and hopefully help you understand how you might take advantage of them, both as a CPG and as a retailer. Uh, and so without further ado, I think, Susie, we should we should get right into it. Well, let's do that. Great job. Thank you all very much. Um, and with my retailer hat on, I really uh, admire what you both are doing in this space. So let's let's take our folks through some of the key um, elements and the, some of the key research that Alex and you and Afi partnered on. So first slide, five takeaways. So this is a this is a bit of research work that um, at the end of this, you are, can reach out and, and get a copy for yourself. But really the five key takeaways of the future of Frozen, not just the future, but the current of Frozen. Because as we we're saying, Frozen's having a moment. I like to say Frozen is really hot. I mean, it's because it's all those things. It reduces waste. It opens access to nutrition and great tasting food. And it's quite profitable when we really, with our retailer and merchandising hat on, when we know how to zero in on that customer. So Randy, you want to hit these five key points? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the playbook is, is very detailed and covers a lot of different topics and categories. These were the five insights that really stood out though, as we as we sorted through all of that, that detail. And the first is, is sort of the reason why we think both uh, producers and brands and food retailers should be excited about it. It's growing faster than the rest of the, the store. And it's one of the faster growing departments in the store. What that means when we run the numbers on it is that there's $10 billion of growth to be sourced from frozen over the next three years. So we think it's really a place that should be a priority. And there's a lot of exciting, exciting business opportunities to be had there. The second insight, which was at least for me, not intuitive, is that regionality is actually very important in frozen. You see tastes in different parts of the US be very different in terms of which frozen categories shoppers like to buy and which frozen categories they need to see in their assortment for a food retailer in a uh, branded CPG to be successful. You know, I think the third piece is very timely given where we are from an ec economic standpoint. We know that consumers are more and more value conscious and that's actually across wealth uh, profiles, wealth segments, and income segments. That's really happening across all consumers. And what we're seeing in Frozen is a ton of growth in dollar relative to traditional food retail. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but we really think there's an opportunity with the value-focused consumer that's going to be really important, not just in the short term, which we think is, is critical in 2024, but also as those consumers continue to seek value over a longer time frame. So let me let me uh, pause you just there for a second, and then maybe Ali is in a moment. You take the next two because they focus on people. But with my again as a retailer, as a merchant, I just want to call out everything you just stated, Randy. This is fast growing, and it really shocked me to find out you know ten billion dollars of growth over the next three years. And you know what we do as retailers? We work all week, 
And come the following Monday, we get in and we're all sitting around a table and we do P&L review. And we look to see whose department, whose categories are growing faster than the others. Then it's like, holy cow, all right, let's look at frozen. But honestly, you know, what my challenge to retailers out there is, ask yourself, how often are you examining uh, SKU level detail? How often are you doing resets? When's the last time you really focused on price and promotion down the frozen aisle? Because know that all the new culinary trends, and we're going to get into some of those, and there's a complete new area of profitable growth are available here. In the market, yeah, region matters. Know who your customer is, tailor accordingly, and the channel. This is for everyone. I love thinking about Frozen as democratizing the dinner table. The last couple, Ali, on the customer, on the people piece, um, what are your thoughts on both customer and innovation? Well, we know that there's big growth across the category, as uh, Randy just mentioned, and, and you're talking about with the $10 billion in growth potential. That's because our core consumer is a millennial with children. They're in the busiest times of their lives, and they like Frozen for the value it offers. And value means so many things. It means value in time. It means value in price. And it means value in quality and nutrition. Um, and our core consumer, uh, we're really excited about that trajectory of growth. The It expands or extends into the Hispanic marketplace, uh, especially in the United States, Yep. As we see this demographic growing, there's a big opportunity to help to expand that value proposition to that uh, customer base. And then in innovation, this category is on fire. Uh, we have so many exciting new areas with, in particular, uh, global brand or global flavors. That yep. is where consumers are looking. This core consumer is a really adventurous consumer. They're willing to try and taste anything, and they like global flavors. The more authentic, the better. And that's what you're seeing in the aisle. That's what's being delivered. So um, it's an exciting place. Yeah, I love it. And so as we move to the next slide, I was just going to go uh, underscore that by saying I'm now addicted to um, uh, Strong Roots. Um, what a new brand that I discovered at the conference when we met their CEO. Oh my gosh, they've got incredible flavors and innovation. So I'm loving that. Um, State of the Frozen. Um, Randy, give us the highlights here, um, because as you've already mentioned, this is really fast growing. Absolutely. Yeah. And we really just wanted to help uh, dimensionalize this and break it down into the diverse set of categories that exist within the frozen department. And so you can see on the left, the macro projections over the next three years uh, through 2026. And on the right side of the, the slide that's up, you can see how it breaks down in terms of different categories. And, you know, a lot of these are the traditional uh, big categories. That's that part is pretty intuitive. And I think what you're seeing is all the innovation that Ali just talked about is going to need to show up in the five categories listed to the right. And in places, we'll talk more about this, but in places like fruits and vegetables, it's around how do you get more convenient food prep options in place, not just frozen vegetables, but frozen vegetables that have some value add that make cooking and preparing meals easier. In breakfast, it's all about convenience and handouts and, and on the go. In pizza and entrees and snacks, it's all about Convenient, yes, but also taste profiles and making sure we can hit the health and wellness evolution. As health and wellness evolves in the minds of consumers, how do we make sure we're lining up to that and serving that need? And so, you know, we, what here we just really wanted to help uh, understand. So, where is this growth going to come from at a little bit more of a discrete level? Yeah, that's really, really helpful. But even at a macro level, as I think about my planogram and how I'm flowing my frozen doors, uh, terrific. Let's look at the regionality in the next slide, which was. Like you said earlier, Randy, some of that did surprise me as well. Um, this is sort of a heat map of customers and how they're sh shopping differently across the country. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and uh, yeah, again, yeah, this was not intuitive for me. I thought Frozen, I, you know, done a lot of work with localization, have helped a lot of CPGs drive their assortment in that context as retailers, you know, for the last 10 to 15 years, I've really realized the importance of that. And Frozen has never been the focus of those efforts in my experience. And so, to see this emerge from the analysis was really interesting. And, and just as an example, if you look, take the Western half of the country, frozen pizza in the mountain region indexes at 115 versus wow. the national average. But as you move to the Pacific, it indexes at 69 versus the average. So you see this huge swing and we think there's so many implications for how to think about assortment, how to think about localizing your assortment and how you think about having the merchandising line review and promotional conversations between CPGs and food retailers. Uh, Ali, any perspective to add here? 
I'm just thinking about after skiing, I want a frozen pizza. So maybe <laughs> that's what's driving it in uh, in the mountain region. Um, but pizza is also an interesting category, right? Because we do have regional manufacturers of pizza and they are getting into the local uh, retail uh, distribution cha channels. So pizza is an, an interesting one to explore from that perspective. Yep, spot on. Beautiful. We're moving to our next um, topic. So dollar stores. This was, I, I was very heartened to see this because again, you know, representing all people, Frozen has massive depth and breadth um, and there's something for everyone. And I thought, I think Randy, the research you all did on the value conscious shopper underscores how this wins for people and also ticks ticks a box with how it dovetails into Affie's mission. But what are the key takeaways here? Well, for one, um, for conventional food retailers, we know this is another category where they're going to find competition and challenge that's emerging from dollar store. Uh, for two, it, it's a demonstration of where the value conscious shopper is moving. And again, as I said at the outset, this is this crosses income segments. And so, you know, what we think it implies for conventional food retailers and CPGs is that you really need to think about your assortment, your new product innovation cycle your price pack architecture to make sure that you can successfully compete for this consumer that may have you know, a cash constraint week to week that may have uh, the, not, not have the ability to inventory frozen, which a lot of times we know when we promote frozen, that leads to demand pull forward and, and, and storage, uh, which is one of the, the great attributes of frozen. But we know there's this other consumer to serve that, that isn't going to look that the same and isn't going to act and buy the same. And, and we think the emergence in dollar really underlines the, po the point that there's some new shopper and consumer need states that, you know, there's a big opportunity for conventional food retailers and, and CPG brands that are able to configure their offering to, to meet. Another point about the value shopper and Frozen and, and the, the really where Frozen comes into play here is around food waste. The average family spends or loses $1,500 a year due to food waste. That doesn't happen when frozen is involved and no one can afford to waste food right now and to waste those kind of dollars in this economy. So here's an, an example where the category helps deliver to your consumer by expanding their dollar and still delivering choice uh, and nutrition. I love that, Allie. That's God, $1,500. You know, I've seen stats before that estimates that the American you know, consumer wastes 30% of everything they, they buy at the grocery store, 30% of fresh. And you're right, frozen is the answer to that. But I, that really strikes home when you think it's about staggering, it. right? Forty percent of food waste occurs in the home, and frozen is a great way to reduce that. So it's good for the planet and good for people. Good for your wallet. Triple bottom line shopping, Hispanic customers, and we've been chatting a lot about that. Um, it's one of the fastest growing segments. Uh, so one of the fastest growing types of grocery retail formats in the United States, but equally the consumers. Um, which is, and they're really representing and coming and growing much more quickly as a community within the frozen consumer. So Randy, if you want to cover some of the top lines here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, what we saw here in the data was that frozen really under indexes the Hispanic shopper who, as Susie just said, we know is the fastest de growing demographic in the U.S. And you can see the stat on the slide that, it, you know, soon it will make up 30% of the U.S. population. And so, we think there's a huge opportunity to close that gap. And some of the reasons why are cultural and there's a fresh cooking uh, element to the culture. There's a cooking from scratch element to the culture. And we know that as we get to more second generation, third generation, fourth generation families, it's likely those habits are going to continue to shift. And that's where we see a huge opportunity for frozen. We think that you know, there's also ways to reach this community and these shoppers that are more effective than traditional mass media. We know, we know that from research that's been done by Nielsen and others. And so we think that specifically intentionally targeting the Hispanic consumer is a huge opportunity. It is around marketing to them. It's also around innovating the assortment to be attractive to the Hispanic shopper. And so as we, as you can see in terms of where uh, the indexes are, there, there's a huge gap to close. And, and we just feel that this is an area that has been uh, long ignored, but is a huge opportunity if it's focused on in the right way. Yeah, neglected. And in um, insights too, because generally in grocery, uh, vegetables are the most uh, purchased item by consumers of frozen foods. And yet here, 
they're lagging, right? So we have the opportunity to really lean in on fruits and vegetables with this in this uh, with this demographic. And again, no no food waste. It's always and it's always available to you if it's properly sealed in your freezer and it's all you know, it's there on demand. Nothing's more convenient. And actually that brings us to the next slide, I think really sort of demonstrates illustrates some of the great, great brands. So convenience, global flavors, good for you, better for you, good for you. I mean, I think this, this we could have just used this one slide maybe, but right. These are the trends that we're seeing today, and this is what consumers are looking for. And we are delivering in this category against convenience. And what is convenience? When you think about it, it's think about we're, we're going back to work now. So we're going back to bringing some of our entrees with us uh, to work, uh, to, to have for lunch, but we're still cooking a lot at home. And think about who is doing a lot of that cooking. The main um, uh, preparer of foods is looking yep. for some help and frozen foods, especially for uh, the homemaker, the woman in the in the in the household, or the main meal preparer, frozen foods really helps put dinner on the table and reduce time, prep time in the kitchen, and reduce cleanup time. So you can really spend time at the table, enjoying food and enjoying your family. So can anybody can get something that? that they like? Sorry, but right. also you, if you have a finicky kid, which I don't know if we're supposed to give into that or not, but you know, there's something for everybody, and you don't have to have any fights or friction at the dinner table. Well, if you don't give right. in, you're, you're better than you're, you've got uh, better discipline than I do. I'll just say that. I know. It's so t- it's... always get a frozen peanut butter and jelly out of the uh, free- <laughs> yeah, cool. get a, get a crustable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm yeah. That's that is a guilty pleasure of mine for sure. Oh, this, get the Smucker's crust. They are delicious. They are delicious. That was my go-to when my kids refused to eat. I wouldn't make them a separate meal, but I said, "There's there's your answer," which yeah. they always adored. So they they liked that. Um, but global global flavors is another area where there's just so much opportunity because it's exciting. We're able to deliver restaurant quality meals yeah. uh, in the with the convenience of your home and at an affordable price. And again, I said uh, um, our core consumer is a very adventurous eater, so they want these foods and they want very authentic authentic foods, right? At the same time, so manufacturers are putting a lot of time and effort into developing. Korean fried rice versus Japanese fried rice, right? Really trying to be um, deliver true flavors and and are getting ingredients from the source that are really unique to those types of dishes, um, and then better for you. Um, it's you know America has been um, striving to eat better for a long time, and frozen food is offering a lot of choices and opportunities to do that, both with portion controlled sizes with um, lower calorie, lower fat, higher protein, really whatever the diet is of your choice, keto diet, their options, organic, um, high in fiber, high in veg, it's there. And that's really exciting. Also, what's exciting is um, for us to be able to share with consumers to remind them that freezing is a temperature state. It's yeah. not a state of processing. It's a temperature state. It is nature's pause button. It is a way to preserve foods naturally. Additives are not used to freeze a product. So this is about the oldest technology that exists, except we do it in a really new way so that we can individually quick freeze a lot of these, a lot of the ingredients to really create a more high quality experience upon consumption. So a lot of different elements to better for you too. That's brilliant. I didn't really think about it that way. This is the natural way to preserve food without chemicals. So again, yeah, that's, that's super cool. One of my favorite. And without sodium. Without yeah, without sodium, that's brilliant. I will give a big shout out to the Kodiak Power Waffles, and they're sort of functional because as they add protein to it, a very clean protein, and it's like a meal meal to go. Um, I think we're I've uh, just got one more uh, area that we're going to chat about. So last slide, conventional. Yeah, this is and Randy, you're always you're good when I get all excited about some of the innovation. I wander off. You're like, but remember, you got to hit the core, right? That's the message here. Yeah, this is the corollary to the the last bit, I think, because when we look at where the growth has come from over the last several years, it's really from the mainstream, what we would call the conventional offering. And so there's no question that better for you, convenient and, and flavor, international flavor innovation is essential to the vitality of the category to keep bringing new shoppers to the category. And at the same time, renovation of traditional conventional offerings is critical and, and will still be essential to success in the category. So I think the trick, 
and I'd love to hear Ali's uh, perspective on how to do this well, is how do you strike that right balance? How do you make sure both get the right amount of attention, given the fact that we all have resource constraints of, of some variety? It, but I do think it's important to call out because it, it, you know all the airtime and the excitement is about the innovation, of course, yet you've still got this core offering that you need to, that needs care and feeding as well. Yeah, and Ali, I think the answer there is probably what we're trying to do with this effort, which is bring retailers and manufacturers together to have more in-depth conversations about what is the type of innovation that's going to be successful, what is the right level of investment by the manufacturer so that we have greater oper- greater odds of success, right, um, once that product hits the retail, um, and to keep an eye on trends. So it's, it's, a, it's an evolving, always dynamic conversation, but one that we need to foster more of. Couldn't have said it better. I think this is a great way to sort of wrap up the conversation and um, re- representing with my retailer triple bottom line hat on, I would just reiterate, you know, pay, retailers out there, pay attention to frozen. Um, don't do a frozen drive by. Just say, okay, well, it's stock, so it must be good enough. You know, look at, pay attention to the trends, curate your assortment, make sure that you're representing you're representing all your customers, um, and that you're looking for what's new and what's innovative. Be- and you can do all this feeling really great because. There, this frozen food, again, reduces food waste. There really is no food waste. Um, there's no food waste other than anything that happens in manufacturing, and that's gotten extremely efficient. As Ali said, freezing is the most natural way to preserve food. So this free, frozen food also democratizes access to variety, to culinary innovations, to global flavors, and to nutritious elements. And it's quite profitable when retailers really start zeroing in and paying as much attention to frozen as we do to other center store categories. So today, you know, for me, that sort of sums it up. So Randy, Allie, if you've got any other final thoughts. Oh, Allie, I think you're going to plug um, something special happening next June, I think. Well, yes, there is. We have our second Frozen IQ conference. Uh, it's going to be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And the intent of this conference is to bring together manufacturers and retailers to collaborate on the issues that matter most in Frozen to help grow the category. So we look forward to seeing you there. Please join us. We're going to have armadillos or maybe not. <laughs> well, we've kind of been there, done that. we got to find another way to have fun. Maybe okay. some music. All right. Well, we won't have tequila, correct? <laughs> we will have tequila. Well, Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, is the cowboy capital. So I, I will be there for sure. Randy, closing thoughts. Well, I would just say encourage you to to uh, reach out and get the larger uh, Frozen How to Win in Frozen playbook. It's got a lot of insights we think that are helpful to both CPGs and retailers. And really, as Ali said, really trying to support collaboration across trading partners to grow the category and grow the triple bottom line for CPG and food retail alike. Perfect. Well, I can't thank you both enough. Um, and you know, good on you for all you're doing with Frozen. It really is. I think the most uh, d- demonstrative people, planet, and profit, triple bottom line industry that we've got. So thank you very much. I appreciate you all. And thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you soon next time. Cheers. Mm-hmm.